Hey guys, so it's me Nicolette Mashile and today I want to talk a little bit about baby showers um, But please remember that none of my videos constitute as financial advice If you are looking for financial advice, please do consult an expert in the field or a certified financial planner or financial advisor So let's jump straight into it. I just want to put a disclaimer. I do not hate kids guys. I love kids Yes, they are financial obligation. I love them to bits and they love me and I'm gonna have kids one day But these are things that we cannot run away from because they put part of our lives, right? So baby showers, hey, why are baby showers so expensive, guys? Because you know what really pisses me off about baby showers? Is the fact that the expectant mother is not the reason why we end up with these expensive baby showers. It's the friends in the group that like to be impossible. And there's always a friend that wants to show up the other friends. And I just don't get it, right? So in the last couple of years, I've attended, I think, I'm probably just a, a minimum of, of, of maybe three baby showers. Thank you, God, for that. And with the exception of one baby shower, where my, one of my friends really threw her own baby shower, everything according to how she wants it, at her standard and at her own pocket it was absolutely amazing we arrived as guests we had the gifts that we wanted to give her and we were happy with the gift that we wanted to give her but let me give you an example of one of some or oh, some of the baby showers and some of the things that we go through at baby showers because of our expectations and i can understand because we're not all the same people right so we don't think the same we don't all have the same pockets but this is what usually happens when you're planning a baby shower you guys will be put in this group there's going to always be a ringleader and it's usually the person that thinks she's the best friend right now you're all in this group and they say, okay, we need to contribute like 300 rand. The baby uh, daddy or the partner, the boyfriend has also offered to contribute some sort of money, right? Then they'll say something like 300 rand and you sit in there thinking, there's 10 of us here and 300 rand equals to like a thousand rand. How much do you guys really think that is going to be and how much can we really, what can we really get with that? And that's a confusing part because the projected cost or the cost that we speak about in the group where everybody tries to downplay this cost is never the cost that you actually pay at the end of the day. And I'll tell you why. Because first and foremost, you've got this person that says, no, guys, I have a friend who can design a great uh, uh, invite. And now we design this invite and this invite looks like a wedding invitation or it looks like this amazing thing invitation. And now all of a sudden the wedding, uh, this baby shower invite is now creating expectations that some of us didn't even think of or all of us didn't really expect. But now here it is. It's a big white elephant in the room and we've got to deal with it because now you kind of this fancy invite and then we are taking this person to like scoopy scoopy where it doesn't live up. And you know, once that invite is done, it starts to create all these other expectations. Now it's about Honali dress code. And the dress code is always J out, way out, J. Somebody will just say, let's all wear star yellow. And you're there say, thinking, where will I find star yellow? So now that pushes you to now go and spend money to buy the star yellow, right? And it's now the star yellow. It's now, oh, guys, we don't have enough money for the cake. This is the type of cake that we want to do. And the person who's responsible for cake is there on the internet Googling nice baby shower cakes. They find the most expensive baby shower cake. And that's the one they want to pick. That's the design they want the one with the most fondant and then all of a sudden now we all must contribute to this beautiful cake that we actually cannot afford with the three thousand rand that we are projected and it's not that i don't want to pay the money but the thing is when you create an expectation in people's heads and you say we just need you to contribute 300 rand my friend please can i only contribute 300 rand please don't put me under pressure because at the end of the day i still want to give my friend the mother to be a gift that actually makes sense a gift that's on her registry because that's the other thing we don't do as people this person takes the liberty of going into the shop and clicking and scanning the things that they want for the for their baby the things that they know they're going to need and at the end of the day because you've so spent out on preparing this baby shower that sometimes you're even disgruntled because it's not your ideas you don't like them and the thing is it's the best friends ideas that we end up agreeing on because you also don't want to be a conflict type of person you now have spent out on the cake you spent out on the 300 rand you were supposed to spend you spent out on the gift you spent out on driving to the location you spent out on the dress code yeah like it's tough so my thing is how do we make baby showers as cost as uh, as affordable as possible make the mother happy at the same time but also give her something that is well deserving of the friendship and is a reflection of the friendship that you guys have and i think this is very important and it it, 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 it hinders a lot on what type of a relationship do you have with that person because each one of us in that group have a different relationship with the mother to be so it's also important that that relationship is reflected through the gift that we give her right 
Now, my problem is that we give it this one day baby shower thing. We spend, and I mean, baby showers of these days, guys, kitty weddings. They are like weddings, right? Gone are the days where we just do something in the backyard. We do a, 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 a nice little picnic lunch thing in the backyard. People now are doing all sorts of things at baby showers, and it's absolutely amazing. But for me, a gift like that needs to be a gift that is lasting. Yes, there will be pictures, and yes, there will be a hashtag, and yes, it will be amazing. But when are we ever going to be able to gift this child a gift that is long-lasting? Because now... Me as Nicolette, I've gone and bought my uh, this poor child a two-piece. And every single time I see this child, I'm going to ask, why is she not wearing my two-piece? But I'm not the only friend. So I then thought, what, is, what will happen if we give this child a long-lasting gift? One that you don't feel disgruntled. Instead of all this frills and skill and beautiful things about baby showers, which, are, by the way, some of your baby showers are absolutely amazing. I do not hate on them. And I think they're absolutely amazing. And if you can afford it, go ahead and do it. But let's take away the pressure of having to do these type of baby showers and having to do and spending so much more money on the frills and the glitter and all that instead of the gift that we're supposed to be giving to our friend, which sometimes a friend does want the frills, which then is okay. Right? But I say, if you want those frills and all those things and the whistles and the bells and everything, please throw your own baby shower. I mean, really, because you know you've got a group of friends that might just not be able to do that. And now, to pressure. But I'm just saying, what if we look into giving a gift that is long-lasting, for instance, starting off the mother with an investment, right? Tax-free account would be absolutely amazing, but they do uh, defeat the purpose because a tax-free account is usually for somebody who has any or some, some sort of tax obligation. And a child usually, especially at birth don't have a, 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 a tax obligation and by the time you've reached the threshold of 500,000 rand it's probably before they even have a tax number which then means that you've taken away their ability to use a tax-free account before they're actually even tax uh, uh, paying citizens so there are other investments and I, I was having a conversation with somebody the other day and we're talking a little bit about the fact that um I was saying, what assets have you bought yourself this year? And people are like, yeah, I haven't really bought an asset. Because we always tend to think that assets are supposed to be huge things, things like uh, 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 houses, things like cars. Those are not the only assets that we have in South Africa. We do have shares, unit trust. Um, we do have freaking hell, education policies. Start the mother off with an education policy. But I just feel that, and, and this is my personal opinion, is that if you're going to give a mother a gift for a child, give them a long-lasting gift that actually is going to matter and is going to bring about some change in the child's life because like say about the newborn they literally run out of their sizes within the first six months all these little newborn clothes that we have bought as gifts in the first six months because you're disgruntled from paying the the, the 300 rand that you need to pay contributing to the cake contributing to deco contributing to the design contributing to getting yourself there and then again having to buy a gift so you what you do is you end up spending the least amount of money on the gift and you do a solanka and then you hear people saying i am here my presence is a gift and rightfully so your presence is a gift but it would be nice for you to be able to give somebody a long lasting gift so let's look at giving mothers to be some great because having a child is really expensive and it takes a lot of your savings because sometimes you plan for it you've got medical aid and all those things and then the unexpected costs that creep in i've never had a child i'm just telling you from what i hear right so you have these unexpected costs and you're paying out of pocket so it would be nice for you for you as a friend to start this person off with a nice gift also just thinking about the tax implication obviously if you're starting an investment for a child there is a donation exemption tax in this kind and it's up to a hundred thousand rand so that's also something that we can look at into saying as 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 the friends of this baby as the aunties of this baby we would like to donate a certain amount of money to start off this child with an investment and i can tell you a lump sum of even just five thousand rand for a baby now and it's put away for the next 18 years could really be a big differentiator to that child starting off their careers you know their businesses going to school doing a whole lot of things so let's re-look at baby showers and re-look at our ways of gifting our friends is the baby shower party the frills and the bells and the whistles really worth it versus something that you could give them that is tangible and they can cash in and we take away that instant gratification this person is able to cash in this type of a thing 18 years afterwards Mwah.